Hallelujah. Come on and worship him. Come on and lift him up. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you have made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. So if you are excited, if you are happy, if you wouldn't mind standing to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. Come on and help us sing today. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I love you. I place the one above you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. How many you need them on today? Lord, I need you. Oh, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. More than anything, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. Anything. Oh, come on and lift him up. Come on and lift him up. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Than anything, oh Lord, I love you. I place no one above you. Say, Lord, I love you more than anything. Hey, Lord, I love you. in 
anything. Come on and worship him. Help me love him on today. Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on and lift him up. He's been so good. He's been so kind. Hey, say I love. Say more than anything, I love you, I love you, I love you. Hey, say more than anything, I love you, I love you, I love you, yeah. Say more than anything, I love you, I love you, I love you, yeah. Say more than anything you I'll praise you I'll praise you yeah 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 say more than anything I'll praise you I'll praise you I'll praise you yeah 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 say more than anything I'll praise you in spite of my circumstance in spite of what I'm going through hey I'll praise I praise I praise I'll praise you I'll praise you you, yeah, yeah. Say more than anything. 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 Hey, say I love you. I love you. I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say more than anything, I love you, I love you, I love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say more than anything, I'll praise you, I'll praise you, I'll praise you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say more than anything, I'll praise you, I'll praise you, I'll praise you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say more than anything. You. I'll praise you. I'll praise you. Say more than anything. 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 I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Lord, more than any, more than I love, I love, I love, I love, oh, with all of my mind, oh, with all of my heart, hey, I love, I love, I love. strength hey with all of my heart more one more time I love 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 hey 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 I love you I love you I love you hey boy say more than anything Lord, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Glorify Hallelujah. Name. Come on and open your mouth and give God a worship in this room. I said open up your mouth and say something really nice to God. Come on, say something really nice to God. Open up your mouth. Come on, let me hear the worshipers in this room. Come on, lift up your voice all over this room. I dare somebody to open up your mouth that's not ashamed and say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I adore you. There is nobody like you. There's nobody greater than you. There's nobody stronger than you. There's no one more power. I said, open up your mouth. 
I can't tell it like you can tell it what God has done for you. Can we take a worship moment? Open up your mouth from the fruit of your lips. Articulate your appreciation and honor to God. Come on and open up your mouth all over this room and bless his mighty and wonderful righteous name. Come on, open your mouth and worship the Lord in this room. Come on, you can lift your hands if you got the activities of your limbs. But whatever we do right now, let's give him praise. Let's give him honor. Let's give him glory. Come on, as a unified body, open up your mouth and shout, you've been good. You're amazing, God. Open up your mouth and say, God, if it had not been for you who was on my side, I don't know where I'd be. I just want about 12 people in this room that are not ashamed to give him some glory. Open up your mouth and give him glory, give him glory. Open up your mouth and give him glory. Come on and open your mouth and give him glory. It's your breath and our hunger. Come on and worship the Lord. You give life, you give love. Oh, come on, stay right there. Open your mouth. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Come on and worship him. You give life, you give love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore. You restore. You restore. Come on, come on, open your mouth. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, great are you, Lord. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Somebody lift up your hands in this room. Those of you that can, just stretch your hands toward heaven. I don't want to force you to do nothing. But if you know that he's been good to you, open up your mouth. Stretch your hands toward heaven and say something really nice to him. If you know that he's been good to you, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Somebody tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You've been good. You've been amazing. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Oh, no, no, no. Great are you, Lord. The altar is open. Come on, elders and altar workers. Great are you, Lord. Great are you. The altar is open right now, so all of my ministers and elders, make your place. Take your place at this altar. There may be somebody in this room that said, I can't wait till later. I got to come now. And if that is you, there's people here that are praying with you. And if you just say, I just want to kneel at the altar, ain't nobody going to bother you. But come now. Come, come, come on. You can come right now and kneel at his feet. You can come and get prayer. Oh, my, my, na, 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 na. Oh, you give life, you give life, you are love, you bring light, you give hope, you restore every heart. Say, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Say, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the dark. You give hope. You restore, you restore every heart, every heart that is 
Somebody say, Great are you, Lord. When it's time, when doctor's ready, oh, all the your mouth and give him glory. It's your breath. Somebody worship him in this room. Do you hear the song? Yes. It's your breath. No, no, no. So we pour out and all the earth and all the earth will shout. We'll give you glory. David said that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast of the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And all the earth will, and all the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify. Shout greater. Oh, no, 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 no. Said it's your breath. I can't hear you in this room. So we pour out. Come on, all over this room. Zion say it's your. You did it for me, God. You're the reason I stand here. You are the reason I stand here. Yeah, everything that I am is because of you, God. Everything that I am is because of you, God. It's your in our lungs, so we pour out. Oh, now open up. 
open your mouth all over this room and just give God a worship with the fruit of your lips. Come on, open up your mouth in this room. Somebody send up a praise. Somebody tell him how much you love him, how much you appreciate him, how worthy he is. If you know that your life would be nothing without God, I dare you to open up your mouth. Forget about who's around you. When I lift my hand, it symbolizes that I'm ready to surrender and to receive. My hands say that I'm grateful. My hands lifted up say that I'm grateful. My hands lifted say that I have not forgotten what you've done for me. I haven't forgotten your sacrifice. I haven't forgotten what you've done for me. Oh, somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Oh, it's your breath in our lungs. It's your, yeah, 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 yeah. So we, yeah. Come on, all over this room, lift your voice. Let's go. In our lungs. So we, it's your breath. Yeah, yeah. So we fall. straight to the water right now we're going straight to the water church come on all the people that are taking place for the for the baptism let's go let's move right in this good flow let's move right in this let's move right in this come on let's move right in here somebody grab hold to the baptism candidates I got you if you guys would follow these two people right here, we're going to go right into the glories. Because we already in the, in the glory. Oh, man. Oh, oh. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out, oh God. It's your breath. Come on, let's say it again. It's your breath. So, Father, we pour out. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all our lungs. So we pour. Yeah, yeah. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour. It's your. sing that in this room say it's your breath in our lungs oh my so we pour out so we pour out so we it's your breath oh my so we pour out oh so we pour out so we pour out so we pour out. 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 So we. So we pour out. So we pour out. So we, so we pour out. So we pour out. We pour out. So we, so we pour out. So we pour out. So we pour out. So we pour out. So we pour, so we pour. So we pour. Amen. Amen. Praise.
the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're here today. State your name. Avi. Avi. The tears are flowing from Avi. Come on, let's, en let's encourage her. Avi, do you publicly confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you promise to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. Avi, is there any one word you want to say to everyone? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's the best word I can hear. Thank you, Jesus. We pour out. Then by the authority vested in us. We baptize you in the name of God the Father, the Son who is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. We pour out again. So we pour out. So we pour out. So we pour out. So we pour out, so we pour out, so I'm gone, we pour out, so we pour out, so we pour out. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So we, pour. we have our next candidate here, state your name. Zeta Gaston. Zeta Gaston, do you publicly confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do, yes. Do you promise to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. And you have standing next to you to support you, your uncle, Elder Charles Fulling. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So it's our pleasure to baptize you. All right, I'm going to let Charles come on this side and say the word without him. All right, Zeta, we baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh, consuming fire, sweet perfume, his awesome presence fills this room, so we pour out. What's your name, sir? Jelani Horton. Jelani, why do you want to be baptized? I love Jesus. <laughs> he loved Jesus. Amen. So, Jelani, we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, 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 oh. consuming fire. Sweet perfume, his awesome presence fills its room, so we pour out. Hallelujah! Oh, so we pour out. Hey, consuming fire, sweet perfume, his awesome presence fills this room, so we pour. Out. So we pour. Out. Right here, state your name. 
Lavon Jordan. Lavon Jordan. Lavon, we understand that it's also your birthday tomorrow. Amen. Yes. Yeah. So you'll never forget the day you were baptized. No, I won't. Do you publicly confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. Do you promise to follow him all the days of your life? Yes, I do. Amen. Well, let's do it. So we, so we baptize you, Levon, in the name of God the Father, the Son who is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. So we pour out. So we pour out, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, so we pour, so we pour out. So we pour. So we pour out. So we pour. Can you state your name? Latoya. Latoya, you come to be baptized today. Yes, I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ and publicly confess him as your Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. Yes, I do. Hallelujah. Yes, you do. Amen. Well, right now, we're going to baptize you by the power of God. Are you ready? I'm ready. You're going down as an old person and coming up as a new person. All right. Go ahead and hold that over your uh, nose. All right, we baptize you, my sister, by the authority that is in us, in the name of God the Father, Jesus, who is the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. We will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the said he's a little tall yeah. we gotta we're gonna have to step up a little bit here oh, or he's gonna have to crunch down oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> can you state your name Devonte rivers Devonte rivers Devonte, do you publicly confess jesus christ as your lord and savior yes sir i do all right Devonte, are you ready yes, sir. let's go let's go let's step it up a little bit for Devonte. there we go here we go all right Devante, by the authority vested in us, we baptize you in the name of God the Father, in the name of Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. got our next candidate. I see the tears flowing from your eyes. Can you tell us why this moment is so important to you? I just feel really blessed to be a part of this congregation. And I'm ready to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I feel it. I feel it. Can you state your name? AJ. AJ, do you publicly confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. Come on. Yes, you do. All right, AJ, are you ready? The Holy Spirit is all over you. Hallelujah. This is, this is baptism with water, but we believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So in the name of God the Father, in the name of Jesus his Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we baptize you in water and with the Holy Ghost. It's your breath. It's your breath. Let's go. 
my, my, my. I heard somebody say, what a wondrous day. Who are you? Tiffany Lloyd. And what brings you here today? I want to dedicate my life to the Lord both heartedly. So we're going to baptize you today. She says, I want to dedicate my life wholeheartedly. Fire in the world. everything. Burn it all yeah. up. Hallelujah. Fire so, in the world. So, Tiffany, Burn we're going to baptize you today. In the name of the Father. In the, water. in the name of the Holy Ghost. And the name of the Spirit of God. And the Son. Fire in the water. Fire in the water, fire in the water. Oh, fire in the water, burn it all up. Fire in the water, burn it all up. Oh, no, 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 no. Fire in the water, burn it all up. to the water Take me to the water To be baptized oh, 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 oh. Alright Somebody shout praise the Lord Praise the Lord This is the day that the Lord has made Y'all saying, hey we came here for the anniversary What's going on? We're just being the church <laughs> Can you state your name? Mary Crabtree. Mary Crabtree. Today, do you publicly confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Yes. All right. Are you ready for this? Yes. All right. Let's do it. Mary, by the authority vested in us, we baptize you in the name of God the Father, in the name Take of the His water. Son, Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Oh, my mom, take me to the water <laughs> to be baptized. Yeah. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water to be your name sir Warren Goodson Warren Warren you got Those tears in your eyes behind. why is that Come on, let forget come. those things behind me leave it in the water leave it in the water leave it in the water I just saw an amends leave it in the water and uh, I got work to do for God Leave it in the water. Work to do for the Lord. Leave it in the water. I'm going to baptize you. Let's go. Leave Wait it a minute. In the water. You publicly confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Leave it in the water. Yes. Amen. By the authority vested in us, Leave it in the we water. baptize you, my brother, in the name of God the Father, the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Who dwells within us? Leave it in the water, yeah. yeah. Leave it in the water, yeah. Leave it in the water. Leave it in the water. The old man, leave it in the water. Leave it in. Lord, come on, everyone. Leave it in Put the your water. hands together for Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody Leave say, it Thank you, water. Jesus. Yeah. It's 
It's your breath, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour around. Let's pray in this room. It's your in our lungs. So we pour around. Father, we declare your glory in this place. Father, we declare your glory in this place. Father, some came in here weary and wounded, but we refuse to leave here the same way that we came. So we declare and decree that we'll leave here with joy. We'll leave here with peace. We will leave here in restoration. God, for the remainder of this service, Lord, speak loudly in our ears. Let someone be healed, delivered, and set free in the name of Jesus. Everyone that went to the water, God, we pray that everything that they have dealt with in their past was literally left in the water, was literally let go of every issue, every circumstance. We left it in the water for an opportunity to do things new and to do things different. God, we bless your name. We magnify your holy name, Jesus. Have your way in this service. I need help in this room. Open your mouth and say, God, have your way. Say, God, have your way. Father, we declare that your grace will fall on this room, that healing will fall in this room. If anyone needs healing, if anyone needs joy, if anyone needs deliverance, we're believing it by faith that today it shall be your day in the name of Jesus. You told us in your word to speak those things that are not as though they are what they were. So God, we're speaking it right now. In the name, I dare you to speak your healing, your deliverance, whatever you know. Right now, in the name of Jesus, you told us to speak it, God. You told us to speak in God, so we lift up our voices in this room, declaring the works of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Touch the word that's going to go forth. Let family members get saved. Let children surrender their lives. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray and believe that these things shall be done. Let everyone shout, it is so, and it shall be done. In Jesus' name. Come on and clap your hands all over this room. Listen, hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands all over this room. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Listen, the scripture of the Lord comes to you this morning from Ephesians chapter number 3, verse number 20. It's a good scripture. We'll, we'll, we'll know of some folks is listening once you read this word. If you got your Bible, you can grab a hold to it. And if you need to write it down again, it's Ephesians chapter number three, verse number 20. I'll say it one more time. Ephesians chapter number three, verse 20. Now unto him that is able. To do, I got to read that one more time because somebody didn't catch it. That, that should have did something for me. Now, word of the Lord says unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all. I'll say it again. Above all that you may ask or think according to the power just look at somebody and say according to the power that works in you let me read it one more time for the folk in the back now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you may ask or think according to the power that works in you. I dare you to look at two or three people and say he can do it. He can do it. He can do it. Shift with me. I said look at two or three people and tell them he can do it. Thank you. Y'all didn't do it. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor. I know it may be a little difficult. But the Bible says. Now unto him. That is able. To do exceedingly. And abundantly. Above all, you may ask or think 
what does that mean that means that simply the things that you're asking God to do is minute to him then things is little he's thinking greater than what you could ever think of just slap somebody and say he's thinking greater than you he's thinking greater than you you may be seated you may be seated hallelujah 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 would you do me a quick favor and just turn to about four people around you and just greet them and say hello if there's somebody around you don't don't hesitate marlena come on where is she at marlena let's go if there's a new person around you marlena i need you if there's somebody around you i got a somebody around you did y'all meet somebody did y'all meet somebody introduce yourself introduce yourself are there any visitors in the room would you wave your hand for all the visitors all the visitors raise your hand there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten listen let's do that one more time turn around and greet your neighbor there's visitors in each section come on greet visitors wave your hand just a little bit longer we want to be able to greet i see you sis thank you for being with us i see you sis back there thank you my brother you could have went anywhere else but you decided to come here this morning. I tell you, when you get on a plane, they tell you to put your seatbelt on. But I'm not going to tell you to do that. I want you to take every bit of turbulence, every bit of push that this plane going to move. Because tell somebody, say, your breakthrough is here this morning. Oh, they didn't hear me. Somebody in the back. I said, your breakthrough is here this morning. God bless you. God bless you. It is church anniversary. Oh, y'all did. Okay, all of my folks, let me say that one more time. For at least the original Highland members, it's church anniversary. 120 years. Thank you, Robert. Oh, now y'all want to play. Amen. Thank y'all. <laughs> ah, listen, it's 120 years. I know it as far back as 1996. Uh, and so we are so glad that those that are here to celebrate with us 120 years. And for those that are online, grace and peace to you, beloved, my brother and sister. We are so glad that you you made it online, even though you couldn't make it on the inside of the building. But you got yourself online and we're so glad that you are with us. If you want to in the chat, it's just hashtag visitor if you're new to this. Uh, and if you want to give your life to Christ at any moment in the service, you can put hashtag new believer and our people will get to you and lead you to the throne amen amen and sister marlena marlena you ready beloved here she comes uh, have you guys been noticing the, the 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 dance and the flag that's been happening on sundays during praise and worship could you guys clap your hands for her clap your hands for her she is an amazing woman she is um officially over our flag ministry uh, we had a meeting this past week and uh, and she was just laying out her heart and talked about how it's it's not just flagging, but we want to pray and we want to seek the Lord and we want to add scripture and we want to do all these things. And I said, listen, I don't know nothing about it, but I trust your judgment and I trust the oil that's on your life. I trust the oil that's on her. So if you would be so kind, she's coming. She uh, she's coming. Marlena, you ready? Because we ready for you. As she prepares. I want to again, once again, say uh, thank you to all of our guests and visitors that joined us on today on our 120th church anniversary. Amen. Amen. Has anybody been in, been at Highland for longer than 20 years? Raise your hand. If you've been at Highland. Okay. Anybody 25 years? Uh oh, 30 years. Okay, 35 years. Listen, I remember when Eli was the baddest kid in children's church. I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, I'm going to say what I got to say. Listen, I remember, I think it was Angela or Tiffany got Eli a whooping after. Uh, was that, who was that, Eli? <laughs> it, it was Gail. Oh, one of them got him in trouble. I think it was Gail. I think it was Gail who got them in trouble. I said, my goodness. Uh, but those were great memories, though, in children's, her children's uh, Bible study. So we had children's Bible study every Wednesday. And we was bringing in about 40 kids, 50 kids uh, a Wednesday. And it was such a joy. Our college students remember uh, those moments. And we're so grateful for those, those memories at Bible study. Now, here we are. Clap your hands for Sister Marlena as she comes.
you never knew You'd go through the things you've been through You never knew that you would fall But I heard his voice say, I heard his voice say Here's a pain, it is not your portion It is not your portion Sickness It is not your portion Poverty It is not your portion I have to embrace the problem oh. somebody and say that's my portion I said look at somebody and say that's my portion that's my portion Sister Marlena we thank God for you now we're going to have our video announcements welcome to Highland Christian Center we are super excited that you decided to join us for a 120th year anniversary at this time I will share some Highland highlights Join us for the men's breakfast at ACC on Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. We are excited to feature not one, but two guest speakers this time. For more details, please contact Minister Eric Garcia. Don't miss this great opportunity for fellowship and inspiration. Join our aspiring ministry class if you feel the call to ministry. We meet every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. upstairs in the green room. It's not too late to join us and explore your colleague. For more details, please contact 
Minister Elsie Butler or call the church office at 503-287-9567. Get ready for an exciting new Sunday on April 21st during our 10 a.m. service. We're thrilled to welcome Minister Johnny Edwards as our speaker for the special occasion. Don't miss out. Get ready for a season of activation at our church with upcoming evangelism classes and street ministry starting in May. Stay tuned for more details. For inquiries or to express interest, please reach out to Elder Ron Williams. Let's embrace this opportunity to actively spread the good news. Thank you for joining us here at Highland for our 120th church anniversary service today. We invite you to join us again next Sunday for our youth Sunday service right here at Highland. The right place where we are building community and changing lives. Have a blessed week. Amen. If, you, uh, if you're not connected to our social media, please stay connected to our Facebook and our Instagram so that you can see all of the great things and our website. Uh, you need to get to our website, www.hcclive.com. Go there and look at our services. And, uh, go to Bible study on Wednesday night. Come to our Sunday morning services. Amen. Amen. We are going to have, I believe, Sister Marsha, are you ready? You next? I'll get you next. It is time to give. It is. Y'all know, y'all know Dr. Nathan like to talk to you when you up here. Uh, so what do you want, Dr. Nathan? <laughs> y'all ever go to the airport and y'all see them people doing them sticks things? That's Dr. Nalen. Uh, do we have another video, uh, Minister Darius? Can we do that now? And then offering folk, y'all stay right there. Let's do the anniversary video. And then uh, we're going to go from there. Uh-uh, leave him alone, Doc. Just let him stay there. <laughs> Let's do the anniversary video. You know, they had church service there. You know, a little bit of church, you know, but it was good service. Be in worship so long, church would be over and you still be worshiping. Well, it would be packed on those four Sundays. And then Highland uh, United Church of Christ, they got to doing, um, asking, you know, Pastor Hart to come back more and then they asked him to be the pastor. It was just like the spirit. You knew that it was a place where God dwelled. And then you'd have my dad, uh, Deacon E.J. Sims, one of the original deacons here. Uh, he would get up, this is how he'd direct. This is it. Every song looks like this. Nothing else. Nothing else. That was it. This, this here. Uh, I didn't get a chance to meet Dr. Johnson. You know, Pastor Johnson. He was the the senior pastor. He was the pastor when we were, when we uh, had come here. He had uh, died and called him home. But we did meet Mother Johnson. And meeting Mother Johnson was just like meeting him. Her famous words was this: "As long as you follow Christ, I'll follow you." And one time, our our uh, foundation, Mother Opal Johnson, sang. Mother Opal Johnson would always say this, as long as you follow Christ, I'll follow you. Because what we do is not for ourselves. It's not for ourselves, you know? It's the building of the kingdom. One thing I love about God is because he sees no color. He n doesn't matter who you are, what walk of life you are, what you've been through, um, it doesn't matter. We had uh, people who were uh, who were homeless, people who were drug addicts, people who were pimps and prostitutes. We had people who had killed people. We had people who would go in and out of jail. But there was something about this particular ministry that draw them, not just to the church, but to Christ. There are events such as Love in Action, the Thanksgiving Feed, the Burnside Feed. We serviced everybody. Park ministry was about what was happening on the inside of the church and we just let it overflow to the outside. And I think back, I think back when we used to have the ministries in the park, Brother Robert McDonald was over that, you know? Yes, my name is Robert McDonald. I'm a member of Highland Christian Center and have been for 24 years. Wow, I did Love in Action for many of years and Love in Action we did at the park. We had brought many of people out from Alberta Park to Columbia Park. Um, we were at different parks in the turnout there wasn't only a turnout we would see them come in 
and joining the church, being successful. Um, our ministry there would be talking with people and entrusting in them that they would join, come out and see, get offered drugs, housing, and we had lots going on and it was very effective. It's not only the music and the entertainment we had those days, it was coming out and getting connected to the right sources and allowing our Highland Haven program to connect the dots with you. All, all of that was God's doing. And all of us at one time or another have played a part in establishing and letting people know that God is real. Mother Oba, she was, she was fired up. She ain't play with nobody. She made these lemon pound cakes, these lemon cakes that people emulate now, but they haven't got put to perfection yet. Mother Oprah Johnson, um, Mother Mother Fletcher, Mother Gibson, um, we had some great mothers. I mean, some greats. We can, uh, Mother Gloria, Mother Keys. See, we just started doing them TVs. Mother Keys was the first one who bought that big TV, sits right there with her name under it, at the door. She she purchased that. Uh, we had Mother Ruth. Now she's the one who can almost, I think she do do them lemon pies, them lemon cakes, like Mother Oprah. Now, I don't know who taught who, but I know they did it. And so I remember the Thanksgiving feed, and I always thought about it when we were on night and going. It wasn't a very big place, but it was the mothers were in the kitchen, cooking and serving, just to see a group of women who showed so much love to to one another and not just the love, not just to us on the outside, but looking in the kitchen and watching those mothers just cook and serve. And it to me, it was a staple, right? But Highland have always been a blessing. The ministries that we have, you know, is God said. You know, you got the Burnside feet. I think about the men, the deacons that was going there every Tuesday, you know, and then Deacon this, and then you had some of the regular men was going, uh, uh, Deacon Charles Jennings that, that headed that up. Not one time did he say, I can't make it. He was faithful. Good morning, Highland. My name is uh, Senior Deacon Charles Jennings. I've been here at Highland for 24 years. The heart of my ministry here is Burnside Feed. What is Burnside Feed? It's a ministry that reaches out to the, the less fortunate people here in our community. Uh, this ministry has been going on for 23 years. I'm reminded of uh, my mentors who brought me into the deaconship uh, Brother E.J. Sims and Elder Esteban Capuya, who mentored me and brought me along. And I remember the first time that we started uh, the Burnside Feed. We uh, were over on Ninth and going, and we had a pot of soup and some sandwiches and a few bags of clothes. And we said we were going to go out and serve the community. And again, that was 23 years ago. How has God blessed us? He's blessed us immensely in that ministry. And we volunteer our time and service right there on the corner of Third and Burnside. We set up, we hand out food, blankets, uh, sleeping bags. It's just an awesome ministry. And to see the people as we touch their lives and how grateful and what the need is there, it's unbelievable. So I just want to say uh, it's just an awesome thing. We have a saying here at Highland that you're in the right place, and that's what I believe. God has brought me to this situation, this church, to serve in the right place. And the last statement of that is, we're building communities and changing lives with this ministry. Amen. Clap your hands for our church history, for those who've been impacted. I have to do two things real quick. 
Would you do me a great favor and celebrate one of the longest standing mothers of Highland Christian Center, Mother Gloria? Would you guys celebrate her? Mother, would you stand? Come on, Mother, you stand. You walked in here. You can stand. You want to. Come on. Wave your hand. Do something. Thank you. Thank you. You in here. All right. We thank God. She's been rolling with this thing for many a day. We thank God for Mother Ivy and her absence. We clap your hands for Mother Ivy. Is she here? Mama's here? God bless you, Mother. God bless you. Good to see you. Mother Ivy's in the room. God bless you, Mother Nancy Smith. God bless you. Celebrate God for Mother Nancy Smith. Mother Avail Gordley's in the room. Clap your hands for Senator. Uh, we thank God. We should have danced right there. God been trying to give her all kind of sicknesses, but our mothers are still here. I said, Mother Nancy, you can't, you can't miss Mother Nancy. Mother got a good hat on. She felt Baptist today. She felt Baptist today, I tell you. Is, that, is Annette Ramsey in the room? Mother Annette? No, -uh, no she's not. Mother's in the room. We got an... Oh. Net, is that you? Somebody ought to give God a praise. Her mother... See, we don't know how to praise. I don't know what's going on this morning. But I need church in this room. Somebody forgot about what he's done. I know this is routine. But we didn't just last 120 years just off offering. But we lasted off of folk being sick and God healing them. God be, I come on him being a wonder working, miracle saving, healing God. Anybody been saved, healed, delivered in the last 30 years here at this church, you ought to open your mouth. Has God blessed you with homes and cars and things you didn't have to work too hard for? You better open up your mouth because he put you in a place where the oil of the Lord is in the room. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. Yeah. They don't know how to praise him. They don't understand it. I know it's what I know it looked like this building came just off of offerings. Let me tell you something. Listen, there was faith under this foundation. I don't know. On ninth and going, there was faith. On Mallory, there was faith. On 18th and Alberta, there was faith. Y'all not understanding what I'm saying. There was a healing and deliverance. And look at your neighbor and say, it's still in the room. It's in the room. It's in the room. Look at somebody and say, healing is still in the room. Deliverance is still in the room. Restoration is still in the room. Oh, my God, today. You don't know nothing about our, our deacons that gave their lives to the Lord. I see you back there, Kevin. I see you dying. Kevin and, and Barry, come on. Brought them a mighty long way. If I could tell Brother Robert McDonald's testimony, how many times he would been in and out of jail, been in and out of jail, but he never lost his faith. He never lost his hope. He gave his life. Y'all, y'all playing with it. Y'all playing with it. All right, I'll leave y'all alone. We had good time too. All right. I've been in night services where people get up out of wheelchairs and walk. I don't know where Charles Pullings is, but Elder Charles Pullings, there was a Sunday night service. We was in here at a Sunday night service, and uh, the man got in here, and he rolled in here. But about 10 minutes later, he got to dancing and shouting. I said, wait a minute. You told me you was paralyzed. He said, that's what they told me. He, I said, wait a minute. You told me you hadn't walked in 10 years. He said, that's what I've experienced. But I remember a story when Jesus walked by the lame man. <laughs> the pool of a Thursday, he said, do you want to be healed? <laughs> he said, what do you want to be healed? <laughs> then he said, take up your bed and walk. Your faith has made you whole. Look at about three people and say, it's your faith that has made you whole. It is your faith. Hallelujah. All right. Listen. I also got to give honor and glory to a pillar of this church, my mama, Minister Laverne Martin. Y'all clap your hands for my mother, the longest standing supervisor of women in this church. Clap your hands for her. Yes, God. 
I've seen her do miracles. I've seen her pray for hundreds, hundreds of women and bringing them to Christ. I mean, on the bus. And they say, I know your mama. It doesn't matter if you on drugs. She's still going to talk to you. She's going to pray you through. See, them is the kind of saints I'm used to. Them is the kind of ones I'm used to. I'm, I'm used to them who didn't care what your background was, where you came from. I remember the deaconess who would go and they'll dance and help you on the floor, help you up off the floor too. I remember them deacons. I'm sorry. I got a flashback on how good God is. I remember. They didn't think we could remodel 18th in Alberta, but we did it. They didn't think we was going to move from 9th and going, but we did it. Anybody in this room that marched from Mallory to 18th in Alberta? Is that you, Barry? Okay, I knew some folks, some real ones. Is Elder Williams, y'all see? You see with me, okay. I just wanted to flashback. It's time to give, y'all. Okay, <laughs> listen, I'm excited about what, you know what it does to me, uh, First Lady? It tells us that God is really who he is. It tells us there's a purpose for the house of God. And if you give your life to, if you come into the hospital, if you come in here, I promise you, you won't leave the same. Listen, has everybody, all the members or non-members, have you all gotten this envelope? If you have not given an envelope, if you haven't gotten one, raise your hand. We're only asking for those to give a $120 seat. Now listen, if all you got is the 20 and you saying, God, this is all I got, but I want to pour into your house because I believe what God is doing in this season. If that is you, just raise your hand. If you say, I got the 100, I ain't got the 20, but go ahead and raise your hand. We want to bring you this envelope. And then when you bring the envelope, if you got a pen, right on the back of it, what you're looking for God to do. I, I dare you. I dare you to. I dare you to put on the back of it what you're believing God to do. Raise your hand. They'll come help. They'll help you. They'll help you. They'll help you. We're looking for those. So I see a young lady right here in the middle. Y'all missing her. There's two, a young brother over here. We got to get these seeds. Come on, come on, come on. Anybody else? Anybody else? Just wave your hand. Uh, uh, brother, brother Usher, there's two people right here. Right here. Uh, they, they don't see him. They're waving their hand for too long. Y'all help them. Brother Barry, guide him. Barry, guide him to him. There's three people. Y'all got to help him. There's three people that need the envelopes. Is there any more? Are we out? Thank you. Thank you, sis. Thank you, mother. Thank you. We need three right in that young brother in this, sweat, this sweatshirt, the blue one. Grab hold to him. I don't want to miss anybody. Anybody else need an envelope? This is your seed. This is above and beyond your tithes and offering. This is your seed set apart from your tithe. This is set apart from your tithe. This is your seed into the ministry. Amen? Amen. I remember in the scripture, the Bible says, try me. And he said, watch me. Open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing you ain't got room enough to receive. Look at somebody and say, watch. All right, stand all over the building. Everybody that's can, stand all over the building. Our, uh, those of you that are giving online or electronically, it's on the screen. Stand all over the room. We don't want nobody climbing over you. Uh, parents, give your children a nickel, a dime, a quarter, or something. Let's go, musicians. I'm ready. Uh, we going old school. I wish Shelly Taylor was in this room. I don't know where my rest of my people is at. But if y'all remember ninth, ninth and going, we used to do this old song called Melodies from Heaven, Joe. We, we used to do this whole thing in here called Melodies from Heaven. Doc, you're coming up right after this, Doc. You're coming up right after this. All right, follow your ushers. If y'all know this song, I want y'all to sing it with us.
with your precious Holy Ghost. Rain down. I'm ready to go. Rain down. Go tennis, rain, rain. I need to hear all my tennis out there. Rain. Said rain. Come on, out to a soprano rain. Rain. Let, 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 let. Say melodies. Say rain down. Rain down. Say rain down on me. Rain down on me. Rain down. Rain down on me. Rain down on me. Say rain down on me. Rain down on me. I can't hear you in the room. Say rain. your hands to the offering reciprocals real quickly everybody that have the activities of your limbs and would you be so kind to repeat after me say father I'm believing you for blessings to overtake us jobs raises and bonuses benefits sales and commissions favorable settlements checks in the mail Oh, y'all didn't say that good enough. Say checks in the mail. In the mail. Gifts, and Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Somebody shout debts paid off. Debts paid off. Bank, accounts Bank accounts full. Protection over my family. Protection over my possessions. Healing and good health. Signs, wonders, and miracles anointings, giftings, and callings. Open heaven and open heaven. Say open heaven. Shout God, I believe. Shout God, I believe for an open heaven in Jesus' name. Father, you told us in the word to ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find and knock and the door shall be open. You told us in your word to speak those things that are not as though they already were. So today we're abiding by your word, oh heavenly Father. To where do we have done what you've called us to do. We believe by faith. You said that we have this faith the size of a mustard seed. We can make mountains move. So Father, we put our faith on it and we spoke it into existence. We believe in you for everything that came out of our mouths by faith it is done somebody shout in Jesus name in Jesus name amen and amen you may be seated our pastor's gonna come and then we'll go through one more song hey somebody say hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Oh, glory to the Lord. Somebody say glory to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is our 120th anniversary. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise offering for 120 years. And we're so excited to be a part of that history and we thank God for what he is doing in our midst today. I thank the Lord for Minister Lamont as our worship host and choir leader today. God bless you. And thank you, Ben, for all that you are doing. And our ushers, our greeters, our deacons, 
our deaconess, our elders, our ministers. Let's give them all a round of applause. Hallelujah. Well, I'm here to introduce, I'm here to introduce uh, the speaker of the hour. But before I do that, I need to extend some condolences. We want to extend our condolences to Pastor Brenda Collins, who lost her mother, Miss Jackson. Brenda, are you in here? Amen. Let's just give her a hand of praise and say, Brenda, say it with me, Brenda. Brenda. We're praying for you. You have our condolences right now as we uh, truly uh, are saddened by the loss of your mother suddenly yesterday. You have our prayers. And then we have our continued prayers for Marilyn Monroe family um, as we said our farewell yesterday for her. And we know she is yet alive in Christ. Amen, Amen somebody. And uh, Sister Rhonda, we uh, have these, uh, the card that you've given us, it says she wants me to read this and just show her love for Highland. The Lord bless thee and keep thee from number 624. And she said, it was so nice of you. And she's saying to Monroe, uh, the Lewis, the Branch, and I believe, is that the Clays? and the Clays family. Uh, let's give uh, Sister Rhonda a round of applause. Thank you, Sister Rhonda, who served with Pastor Gant, who could not be here today as our chairperson of this organization of putting this together, and then Rhonda being the co-chair with him. Let's give them both a hand for putting on this special day. So we thank the Lord for all that is going on today. Now listen, I, I want to uh, get to the speaker because time is well spent and we do have another song in another short video uh, before the speaker will come up. But this young man is a person who has uh, been at Highland, Pastor Reverend Joseph man away, and he embarked on his journey as a minister of the gospel in 2006, delivering his inaugural sermon titled, I Had Lost It, or I Had It, But I Lost It, and I Want It Back. <laughs> I had it, I lost it, and I want it back. His educational pursuits led him to earn degrees in recording arts, psychology, and Christian counseling culminating in a pursuit of a Master's of Arts in Theology from Seattle Pacific University Seminary. He was ordained in 2009, and Joseph has ministered at various churches, including Tabernacle, Missionary Baptist in Seattle, Second Baptist Church in Las Vegas, and Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Fairfield, California. In 2019, this is how the Lord is blessing him. He assumed his leadership roles, co-directing the preacher's track at the Young Leaders Conference in Atlanta and serving as the guest chaplain for the Los Angeles Lakers, NBA champions of 2019 and 2020. Well, now Joseph has come full circle, now serving as the senior pastoral assistant at Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in Seattle, under the leadership of Dr. Robert L. Manaway, Sr., he has traversed the U.S., and the U.S. Virgin Islands, spreading the message of love and faith. And he has preached revivals here at Highland Christian Center. Listen, let's give him a big God bless you. And thank you, Reverend Joseph, for coming down to speak with us. Now, when he gets up to speak, I'm going to ask that we all rise to our feet. Can y'all do that for me? Amen. So good. Say, everyone say, God bless. Pastor Manaway. Well, listen, God bless you. I'll be back at the end of service. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Trina. 
Listen, I thank God for the men's choir decided to join us this on this our church anniversary. We thank God for them and to all the Lord's people. We got one more old school song that we used to grab hold to way back. Thank you, musicians. Let's ride out this thing. And after you'll hear my brother and my friend, Pastor Joseph Manaway, ring the word of the Lord. Now listen, I didn't come to play with y'all this morning. Stand to your feet, all my old school folk, huh? This is a song by Reverend Timothy Wright. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. I'm so glad, I'm so glad, yeah, yeah, yeah. I trouble don't last, trouble don't last. We're my old school folk, let me hear you say, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. Trouble don't last always. Let me go to the verse. Listen. Whoa. He may not come when you want him, but he's on time. On time. Whoa. In time to trouble, I found him to be a friend of. to bear, bear, I'm so glad, I'm so, everybody clap your hand, everybody, trouble don't land, say I'm so glad, I'm so glad, yeah, trouble don't land, stop, come on, say it again, say I'm so glad, I'm so glad, thank you, tell us you're sounding good over here. Trouble don't last always. I need to hear y'all say it with it. Say, I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trouble don't last always. Let's do the verse and get up out of here. Listen. He may not come when you want him, but he's on time. On time. trouble I found him to be a friend of mine this made me think of Delbert Williams <laughs> when the storm clouds rise in your life he will be there I wish my brother Delbert Williams was here listen and all your burdens I know that the Lord will help you to bear bear I'm so glad go out. Trouble don't last always. Weeping may. Let's see if y'all remember this. Weeping may endure. Weeping may endure for a night. Keep the faith. It will be all right. Weeping may Sopranos out in the room. Okay, I see y'all. Sopranos in the room. All right, we're going to do this as a choir. We're going to get out of the way. All right, here we go. Sopranos, would you help us with this? Trouble don't last always. Come on. Trouble don't last always. That's what y'all got to do. All right. No. No, 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 no. It won't last always. All right, Sopranos, where y'all? We, we got to go. Sopranos, trouble. Trouble don't last always. Oh, I hear y'all. No, no. Let me hear the audience. Y'all cut it. Trouble don't come on, Sopranos. Oh, that y'all should be in the choir. I'll talk about y'all later. Yeah, yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. We're gonna do the alto section next. Any altos in the room? All your altos, wave your hand. Okay, I see y'all. Okay, I see y'all in the room. All right. All right, I need my alto section. Y'all ready? Come on. Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. That's what y'all
what y'all gonna sing. No, no. No, 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 we won't last always. All right, where my altos at? Come on, altos, trouble, trouble. No, we won't last always. Oh, there's a lot of altos. Y'all should be at the choir. No, 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 we won't last always. All right, let me hear the altos out here. Say, trouble, don't. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot of y'all. No, no. Yeah. All right, now we got the tennis section. Whether you male or female, we got some tennis in this room, all right? We gonna get y'all here. Trouble don't last our ways. All right, here we go. Y'all y'all listen at these brothers and sisters here. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last our ways. Oh, they heavy up here. No, no. No, 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 we won't last our ways. All right, tennis, y'all got it? Let me hear you just the tennis in the audience. Oh, they out there. Everybody break the music, all three parts, travel. Some and present to the others, my brother and my friend, all the way from Seattle, Washington, from my church up in Seattle. None other than Pastor Joseph Mattaway. Everybody, clap your hands for him as he comes. Let us pray together, our Father and our God, how wonderful and how majestic is your name. And Lord, we do not want to insult you this morning. So before we ask you for anything or suggest anything from you, let us first say thank you for everything. And dear Lord, there was no guarantee that when we laid down last night that we would wake up and see today. And so for this gift called the present, we say thank you. And Father, here we are, a few of your believers in Highland this morning, and we have worship on our hearts and praise on our lips because when our eyelids flew open this morning, we were greeted by some good news, and that was you had once again canceled our reservations to the cemetery. And so for the beating of our hearts, for the air in our lungs, for the cognition of our minds, for the activity of our limbs, we say thank you. Father, I praise you now for this church, for her leadership, for her laity. Thank you for 120 years of service. And Father, some ministries didn't make it 120 days. But for the favor that you've allowed to rest on this place and these people all these many years, we say thank you. Father, I thank you for what our eyes have seen, for what our ears have heard. And for what our hearts have felt. Thank you for what we've experienced here today. But now, Father, it's preaching time. And we need a word from you. It's preaching time. And we need instruction from you. So my request is simple this morning. And that is, speak to us like only you can. Lift up the bowed down head like only you can. When all has ceased and hushed, we'll give your name the glory, honor, and praise. Because we owe you that much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. So it is, so it shall be. Amen. 
Amen. If you're grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time, why don't you put your hands together and show some sign and give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Listen, while you're already on your feet, grab your Bibles. I don't want to belabor the time. Grab your Bibles. Let's journey to the book of Ezekiel. And we'll begin reading uh, chapter 37, Ezekiel chapter 37. Amen. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. It's a great day to be alive, isn't it? I said it's a great day to be alive, isn't it? Listen, I know you have your Bibles or your smart devices in your hand, but can we say amen for Dr. Nalen? God bless you, man. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Come on, Highland. You ought to be able to make a little bit more noise than that for your pastor. Amen. And to Lady Nalen, God bless you, ma'am. And to... Uh, the brothers and sisters who shared the bond of preaching with me to our deacons, our security, our hospitality, our ushers, our audiovisual, the unsung heroes of all of our churches, our audiovisual teams, our choir, uh, my brother Lamont, to these great musicians. God bless you, brothers. And to everyone who is here, and to Lottie Dottie and everybody, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go have some more church. Anybody feel the way that I feel this morning? Amen. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Um, I'll begin reading at verse 1. We'll read a, little, a few of the following verses, then we'll jump down. But Ezekiel chapter 37. I have the New International Version here with me, so it may or may not read a little differently than yours. But in the words of Dr. Frank Thomas, regardless of what version or translation of the scripture that you have, it'll save you if you live it. So I have the NIV here with me. And it reads a little something like this, like the head, head, go. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, you think these bones can live again? And he says, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Jump down to verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. There was no life in them. There was no spirit in them. Verse 9. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it. And this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath entered them. And they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. One more time, verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. And then he came, then they came to life and stood on their feet. A vast army. Do me a favor. Help me preach. Look at somebody to your left or to your right. And if you can't look at them, that means you've been talking about them. So look at them. Somebody to your left and to your right. And say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. We're getting ready to stand again. You may be seated. That's what I want to talk about. We're getting ready to stand again. <clears throat> I solicit your prayers. Well, happy anniversary, Highland. 120 years is quite a feat. There has been hundreds and thousands, and dare I say tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of lives that have been touched and helped directly and indirectly um, from this ministry. And because of your selflessness, because of your selflessness, uh, people whom you probably would never meet have gotten a pair of shoes, have gotten 
a hot or cold meal. I've gotten a jacket to put on because of your selflessness and your willingness to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus in the earth. I love anniversaries because we get to reflect back, as my brother Lamont was doing earlier, and think about all the things that God has done for us to get us to this point. And I told my brother Lamont in the office and uh, reframed the idea with Dr. Nayland before we came out that how fitting is it for us to have so many baptisms during the church anniversary? It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? For this is what the church is all about. However, even though today is a day of celebration, I've been sent here by the Lord to let us know that we cannot stay on this mountain. That, at the southern, that on the other side of every great celebration, especially when it comes to the ecclesia or to the church, is usually a great tug of war or usually great warfare or simply just another valley. But the reason why we can still worship and praise even with the impending valleys and tough times that are coming is because the God that kept you through the last valley is going to keep you through the one that's to come. And uh, valleys are a common thread in the Bible. And valleys in the Bible have far more meaning than just a uh, geographical marker or pen on an ancient map. Uh, in his literal gen genius, God repurposed valley settings throughout scriptures to signal tests of faith. And the depending and de and the depending on him and the deepening of confidence in the one who is with us in those low moments known as valleys. In Numbers chapter 13 and 14, we see the valley of Esco where uh, Moses spies out or sends out spies to scout the promised land. In Judges chapter 4 and 5, we see the valley of Kishon where uh, Deborah and Jael defeated their enemies. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, we see the Valley of Elah, where David defeated that mean old giant Goliath. And chapter in the 23rd Psalm, rather, that we see the Valley of the Shadows of Death, where God comforts scared or intimidated people. For it is there where David says that, yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Y'all read y'all Bible, too. For thou art with me. And that used to bother me, Highland, to figure out why is it, or David, how is it that you knew that the Lord was with you, even in the valley of the shadows of death? And it's simply because of this, Highland, that a shadow on a shadow, or excuse me, that darkness on a darkness can't produce a shadow. That for you to get a shadow, you got to have a little light source somewhere. So no matter how dark it is, the fact that you're sitting there listening to me today lets me know that it's some little light shining on you from somewhere. And I need to see, is there anybody in here today that's ever been through a valley experience? Matter of fact, let me not even ask that. I need to ask at least five people, and I'll gladly make number six that says, I got a little darkness in my life right now. I got some valleys I'm walking through right now. But the reason why I can lift holy hands in the sanctuary, the reason why I can shout amen, the reason why I can still give him praise is because I know he's been with me through it all. You see, the people seated on your row think you worship, and that means ain't nothing going on. No, 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 no. Some of us in here today, don't get it twisted. If you see us shouting and praising God or still have a smile on our face despite the valleys we've been through, it's not that we haven't been through any storms. It's just that some of us learn how to dance in the rain. And I need to see, do I have any rain dancers in here? Matter of fact, just look at somebody sitting around you and say, go ahead, rain dancer. You don't even look like you've ever been sick. Go ahead. Go ahead, rain dancer. You don't even look like they ever lied on you. Go ahead, rain dancer. You don't even look like you ever had your heart broke. Do I have anybody in here today that says, I did not get up, get dressed, get in the car, and get in the church just to sit here and look cute or look handsome? But I came in here today to dance in the rain and to give the one God who's been keeping me through it all some praise in his house. So the fifth valley is from our text. And it is the Valley of Dry Bones where Ezekiel prophesied Israel's restoration. 
if you don't remember anything else I say here today, and I'm pressing, if you don't remember anything else I say, here's our thesis or our thought or our sermon in a sentence. It is this. Trust, trust God's divine directives even in the low places of life. Trust God's divine directives even in the low places of life. So what does it look like to trust God's divine directives in the low divine directives in the low places of life? Number 1, we have to understand our circumstances. Let the church say understand our circumstances. In Ezekiel chapter number 36, God instructs uh, Ezekiel to prophesy the rebirth of Israel. And we get to the top of chapter number 37. The Bible says that Ezekiel says that the hand of the Lord was upon me and he took me to a valley, a, a valley that was full of bones. And to verse 2 he says that his hand led me back and forward all around this valley. And I found out it was a whole bunch of bones. Excuse me. There was a whole bunch of bones. There was a lot of bones there. And not only were they a bunch of bones, but they weren't just dry. But the Bible says they were very dry which means they didn't just get here this has been a multitude a army we find out later in the chapter worth of bones and they've been there for a long time and there's tension here Dr. Nalen because um I thought you just told me that Ezekiel was a prophet I thought you said Ezekiel uh that you were a man of God and God's hand was on you but here you are in a low place a place that is low it's not just low but it's also dry have you ever found yourself with yourself I know you saved I know you sanctified I know you five baptized and you running for your life and all that good stuff I know you and Zephaniah are first cousins and you grew up next door to Malachi and Hosea I know all of that you super saved but have you ever found with your saved self have you ever found yourself in a low place have you ever found yourself in a dry place and it seemed like no matter what you read no matter how many sermons you listened to no matter what you did it seemed like for whatever reason you could not figure out God why am I in this space and how are you even still able to stay sane while you've been in this low dry place answer that question is in verse 1 Ezekiel says that the hand of the Lord was on me in other words I'm in a low place I'm in a dry place but his hand's still on me and that's somebody's testimony in here today you have not made it because of big mama's hands and thank God for her hands and them biscuits that they used to make I did not make it because of my daddy's hands thank God for his tutelage but I've made it where I am because God's hand has been on me and is there anybody in here today that know anything about the hand of the Lord First Chronicles chapter number 21, the Bible says that Satan moved David to number Israel. Satan encouraged David to take inventory of what he had. David gets nervous and he says, I got to count to make sure I got enough warriors to watch my back. He does inventory and he finds out he has nearly 1.6 million men to carry the sword. And the Bible says that the prophet comes to David and says, David, you done messed up. You've, you've made an error. God God is not pleased because David here you are now that you're in the palace uh, you nervous trying to figure out if you got enough people to watch your back when when you were on the other side of the mountain you ain't have nothing but God and he kept you then so why are you in this stage of your life and you nervous trying to make sure you got enough when God is saying I'm all you'll ever need and I need to park Paul's here parenthetically and tell somebody real quick that the pain you feel today the struggle you feel today the hardship you feel today it's not the worst you've been through it's just the latest you've been more sick than this you've had more people betray you than this you've been more lost than this but if he kept you on that side of the mountain then surely he gonna keep you on this side too but that's not the lesson. The lesson is the prophet says, David, God is giving you an ultimatum. You either get three years famine and he can leave you to the pestilence outside or you get three months in the hands of your enemies or you get three days in the hand of God. And David says, don't give me, don't leave me outside to the elements because it's COVID-19 out there and it's Pacific Northwest weather out there. In other words, it'll be 80 by noon and 37 degrees by, by midnight. We 
don't know what the weather going to be like from day to day. Don't leave me in the hands of my enemies uh, because my enemies are like me. They're fickle. They can be phony and they can be unfaithful. So don't leave me in the hands of the enemy. But if I'm going to fall anywhere, David says, let me fall in the hands of the Lord. Why? Because at least in his hand, David says, there is mercy. Mm, yeah, because in his hand, in his mercy, it's a whole lot of stuff I should have got, uh, but his mercy didn't let get to me. Where are my people in here today who knows if it had not been for the merciful hand of the Lord, uh, our bad decisions could have took us out. All right, I don't like how you looking at me in that tone of voice. Uh, when you know the hand of the Lord has been on you, you can look back over your life and say, it didn't just start happening at the 120th anniversary. But when I look back over my life, my testimony is his merciful hand been keeping me a mighty long time. All right, Highland, don't you remember when you thought you was in love real bad the first time and you was in teenage love and you were 16, 17 and she was the captain of the cheerleading squad and he was the captain of the football team and y'all went down to the park and carved a heart in the, carved a heart in the tree, JM plus TL forever, not ever, but ever. Y'all went to the diner, got one milkshake, two straws and you was just so in love, had butterflies and you was singing my, my candy rain all day you was just so in love but then she left you for the captain of the football team or he left you for the captain of the cheerleading squad and then they broke your heart and then you went from singing candy rain to I wish it would rain by the temptations and you thought with your 16 year old self you never would love again but then you went to the 20 year class reunion and they had the same braids in that they had back then they had the same members only jacket that they had on in, tw in 88 that was a Lord protecting you from what you thought you wanted mercy all right, I need to find my other crew. Don't you remember in there was other days way back before you were saved and baptized? It would be a Friday night or a Saturday night uh, and your boys or your girls call you up and say, we going to the party, we going to the club, but you knew it cost too much to get a full buzz on at the club, so you pre-funked at the house. Uh, you had a little something to prime you at the house uh, and then you got to the club, you got a shot and you was feeling real good uh, and then somebody came over the speaker and said something about cash money records taking over for the 99 and 2000 and then you blacked out and when you woke up the next morning you was in your bed in your pajamas safe and sound and then you called your friend saying hey friend how did I get home last night and they said what you mean how you got home last night you got on the table was dancing got off the table said you was tired then you drove home and you don't even remember driving home that was the Lord protecting a fool mercy and I need to see is there anybody in here today that says I don't need a preacher to tell me about the hand of the Lord I don't need a singer to tell me about the hand of the merciful God but when I look back over my own life when I wasn't looking out for me his hand has always been keeping me when I was trying to mess up my own life his hand has always given me his mercy and if that's you look up toward heaven and say Lord keep your hand on my life keep your hand on my mind keep my keep your hand on my heart keep your hand on my church we need your hand all right. So the Bible says, the hand of the Lord was on me. Um, understand your circumstance that you may be in a low place, but at least his hand is on you. And while he's there and looking at these bones, God asks Ezekiel a question in, in verse 3. He says, can these bones live? He says, Lord, you know. Um, I'm so low right now and it's so dry in this valley. Lord, only you know. And may we go into the 121st year hiding and saying, Lord, you know. It's some things that we're not trying, to, we're not supposed to figure out. You got to use faith and just say, Lord, you know. So you got to understand your circumstance. And then secondly, you got to understand your call. So after he says, Lord, you know, in verse 4, he tells Ezekiel, Ezekiel, prophesy to the bones. He says, and say this, hear the word of the Lord. I'll make breath into you and you will come alive again. Um, I'll attach sinew, tendons to the bones and skin to cover the sinew in verse 6. And I'll put breath in you and you will come alive. Then you will know that I'm your God. Ah, you got to understand, understand your call. He says, um, if this army of people, army of bones is going to live again. 
if we're going to stand again, Highland, what we have to do is understand our call. God says, listen, I'll make breath enter them and I'll make them live again. I'll even attach the sinew in the skin and make the skin cover the sinew and put breath in them and make them live again. I'll do all of that, but I need you to prophesy. Um, in other words, what God says to Ezekiel is this. If you preach, I'll perform. <laughs> if you can just stop making excuses as to why you can't be and do what God has called you to be and do. If you can just allow yourself, hear me, somebody, to get out of your own way. What if I told you that our obedience is what is the key to some of our answered prayers? Some of the very things we've been praying about, fasting for, is tied up to our ability to just be obedient and do what he's told us to do. And everybody is not a preacher. Everybody isn't supposed to be on the worship team. Everybody isn't supposed to be on an instrument. But can we, in our respective places, learn how to work our grace? What has God gifted you with? What has he told you to do? And if you will just preach, if you will just serve, if you will just do what I've put in you, I'll perform. And also it speaks to the idea of understanding your, your, your call, but it also allows us to understand our humanity. Uh, because we got to understand that we are men and women of God who preach the word of God, but we ain't God. Okay, we are men and women of God who preach and believe the word of God, but we're not God. In other words, there are limitations to our abilities. So, so that doesn't sit well with somebody like me who like to be in control and make sure everything is how I want it to be. Everything is how I'm going. Everything is set just like I like it to be. But God says in this season, I need you to give. Okay, let me put it like this. Alan, you ever heard the statement, Jesus, take the wheel? Here's what our problem is. Here's what our problem is. We want Jesus to take the wheel, but we want to control the pedals. Jesus, you can take care of the direction of my life, but let me take care of the duration. Let me slam on the brakes in the good times. And let me accelerate through the bad stuff. But no, 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 no. God says in this season, if you're going to understand your call, you got to give me total control. And understanding your call and giving me total control understands that you and I are just men and women of God. But we got to trust God to do the rest of the work. And this is what I've learned, Highland. When you've done all you can, God will do all you can. Somebody in here today can testify to that. Uh, that when I've gotten to my wit's end, I've prayed, I've fasted, I did the best I could. I studied for the test, left it in the Lord's hands, and he did what I could not do. Now, that don't mean nothing to nobody who ain't never had to pray a prayer to, in order for God to answer a prayer or to do something. Have you ever been in a season where your money was funny, your change was strange? Out of all the numbers in your phone, you couldn't find nobody to call to help you, but your testimony is only God made this happen. Let me see if there's anybody in the room today. You know you got a job you don't even really qualify for like that. But your testimony is the reason why I'm the supervisor of people who got more degrees than me is because I trusted God to do what I couldn't do. Where are my people in here today who's ever had your gas light in your car come on on Wednesday and the direct deposit didn't hit till Friday but you didn't run out of gas? It's because your God did what you couldn't do. And if that's you, look up toward heaven and say, God keep doing what I can't do what I can't for my family do what I can't for my community do what I can't for the people you've called me to serve all right so we got to understand our circumstance we got to understand our call and then I'm all done I'll leave us and then we'll all go find some chicken and coca-cola together but thirdly and finally we have to understand our condition understand our condition and understanding the condition Number one, we see the structure. Because in verse number seven, it says, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, 
and the bones came together bone to bone. So now if we're going to stand again, um, we, we, we can't be mutants, but there has to be some structure. Uh, what I appreciate about Dr. Nalen, every time I come, I'm the guest preacher. But he, give, he lets me know what's going to happen to the T as if I need to know anything other than when it's time for me to preach. But he's a man of structure. And he's a man of order. And if we're going to be all that God's called us to be, we, got it. we cannot be afraid of structure and order. But not only is there structure, but secondly, we see the sinew and the skin. Sinew and the skin says in verse 8, I looked and the tendons and flesh appeared on the structure and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. So now here is the structure. Here is the bones. Here's the, the skeleton, if you will. And uh, the tendons came and the sinew came. And now there's flesh on the structure, but there is no spirit. Um, there's flesh and sinew. But there's no spirit. And um, um, th there was no breath in them, verse 8 says. And, uh, and what you have to understand is, Highland, this is the point I'm trying to make here, is that um, without the spirit, we're only flesh. Uh, without the spirit of God, I don't care how many programs we have. I don't care how many efforts we try to instill. I don't care how many bright ideas we have for our church or our community. If God does not breathe on it, we're just doing it in our flesh. If his spirit isn't attached to us, we're doing it for self-aggrandizement because our flesh likes it. And I don't know about you, Highland, but I don't want to be anywhere that his spirit is not. I don't want to be anywhere where the power and presence of God is not. All right, let me see if I can make this make sense. Uh, in 1 Samuel chapter number 4, Israel is fighting Philistine, the Philistines. And while they're there, they engage in a battle. And the first day of the battle, the Bible says that the Philistines whoop them so bad, they lose 4,000 soldiers. Somebody gets the bright idea and says, the reason why we have lost uh, this battle is because um, we do not have the spirit or the presence of God here. So somebody needs to go to Shiloh and get the Ark of the Covenant, the very object. Shiloh, they get the Ark, they bring it to the battlefield, and the next day they have the Ark, but something crazy happens, Highland. The next day, even with the presence of the Lord there, they lost worse than they did the first day. The first day they lost 4,000 soldiers. The next time they fall, they lost 30,000. And my question became, how is it that you can have the spirit or the presence of the Lord on your side and still experience a loss? Have you ever been there before where you feel like you got gone and still feel like you still was losing? Well, in 1 Samuel 4, we get an insight as to how or how maybe they lost it. It's because standing there with the ark with possession of it was Hophni and Phinehas. Hophni and Phinehas were the sons of Eli. And according to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, they were scoundrels who did not know God. In other words, they wanted the spirit or they wanted God on their side, not because they knew its power, but because they knew it was popular. They knew if I got God, then I'll win. Not they did not want God just because he was God. And there's somebody in here today that says, I just don't want God because it's popular, but I need God because of his power. That's that's what happened in Luke chapter 8 and in Mark chapter number 5. Uh, after Jesus is on his way to heal Jairus' daughter, he, he's walking from where he is to where he's going to Jairus' house. Uh, and the whole multitude is around Jesus. Everybody's touching on Jesus. Jesus stops in his tracks uh, and said, who just touched me? And the disciples, namely Peter, said, Jesus, what you mean who just touched you? Everybody touching you. The whole multitude thronging you. Jesus said, no, they're touching me because it's popular but somebody namely the woman with the issue of blood touched me because she needs my power and I need to see is there anybody in here today dressed in your 120th anniversary blue who can stand to your feet and say I did not get dressed because it's popular I did not come to church today because boo boo and Ray Ray Nim said get up get dressed we going to church but I came here today because I need his power and if that's you say look up toward heaven and say Lord, send your power. Send your power to my church. Send your power to my children. Send your power to my mind. Send your power to my money. We need your power. 
All right, I'm all done. Not only is it sinew, but then we also see spirit because the Bible says that without the spirit, that the structure is just a skeletal system. So in chapter, in verse number nine, it says, then he said to me, prophesy to the winds, son of man, and say the sovereign Lord says, come from the four winds and breathe into the slain that they may live again. So God tells Ezekiel uh, to prophesy to the four winds uh, and say to the four winds uh, blow winds blow uh, so that this army can live again uh, I'm going to do it a third time for the Holy Ghost uh, God says Ezekiel uh, it's not enough uh, for there to be structure uh, and it's not enough for there to be sinew and skin uh, but for this army to live again uh, they're going to need the spirit so get the I need you to do something I need you to speak to the four winds and tell the winds to blow winds blow so that the spirit can enter the structure and live again now Highland I'm getting ready to leave you alone but I need you to help me preach here this is where I need y'all's assistance I need you to do something demonstratively it's time for us to speak to the four winds so that our lives can can be better it's time for us to speak to the four winds so that our church can be better it's time for us to speak to the four winds so that our children and our youth can be better are y'all ready to help me out if you're going to help me do me one favor take your right hand which is the hand of power stick out your index finger and let's talk to the four winds point to that corner and get your church on your mind and say blow winds blow we not done yet take the same finger point to that corner and get your marriage on your mind get your children on your mind Get your family on your mind and say, blow winds blow. We not done yet. Turn to that corner and point with your finger. Get your money on your mind. Get your job on your mind and say, blow winds blow. This is the last corner. Go to that corner. Point to that corner. Get every principality on your mind. Get everything you've been praying and fasting for. Get every dry place in your life on your mind. And say, blow winds blow. Now listen Highland This is what I love About the wind Is that I can't see the wind But I can show sure feel it And if that's you Who your testimony is I can't always see what God Is doing in my life Good God Almighty But I can feel him All over me Do me the last favor Look at your neighbor For the last time and say neighbor I can't see it but I got a feeling that it's going to be alright that neighbor too bad and bougie find you one more somebody that look like they need God and say neighbor I got a feeling everything is going to be alright I know you've been sick but it's going to be alright I know it's been difficult but it's going to be alright I know that the devil has been trying to sow discord but it's gonna be all right and what this sermon is about it's not really about Ezekiel it's not really about his gift but it's about an army getting a second win and I need to talk to somebody who feels down who feels weak who feels like you're ready to give up God sent me here to tell you he's getting ready to give you a second win and in verse number 10 the Bible says so I prophesied Come on. So I prophesied as he commanded and breath into them and they stood up again. Look at somebody. Matter of fact, don't look at nobody. Put your hand on yourself and say, self, we're on our feet again. It's time to stand again. I know you've been hurt, but I'm on my feet again. I know I've been
been sick, but I'm on my feet again. Wanted to throw in the towel, but I'm on my feet again. Satan hit me with his best shot, but I'm on my feet again. Depression and insomnia tried to have its way with me, but I'm on my feet again. And so since I'm on my feet, I'm going to use my strength to tell the devil that no weapon that's formed against me is going to be able to prosper. Since I'm on my feet, I'm going to tell the enemy that many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord will deliver them out of them all I'm going to use this opportunity while I'm on my feet to say this be not dismayed whatever be tied I know we don't sing them songs no more but God will oh my God God will oh my God take care of you beneath his wings yeah my God beneath his wings of love abide my God your Savior he will listen just give a few people a fist bump and say neighbor we about to stand again come on don't tell them we getting ready to stand again. Come on. 120 years ups and downs. Thank God for what we've accomplished. Thank God for the work we've done. Thank God for those who came before us. But we get ready to stand again. There's still work for us to do. There's still souls that need to be saved. I want to do something. May I pray, Pastor? I don't even I don't even want to make a long appeal. Number one, for people who understand your circumstance, and like Ezekiel, you find yourself, we're celebrating in here today, but even right now you feel yourself in a low place, in a dry place. Where it seems like you can't really get out of the rut. I want you to meet me at the altar, not yet. Or the second person, or the second group of people, are the people who says, um, I want to understand my calling. That I've made so many excuses as to why I cannot be and do what God has called me to do and be. Um, I've spent too much time trying to get God to change his mind about me. I've spent too much time trying to be Joseph or whatever your name is in God. I've been trying to control the wheels and the pedals. But now I understand in trusting God, understanding my call, my job is to do what God tells me to do and then get out the way. Or thirdly, you're hearing you say, "Um, I just need prayer. Somebody help me understand my condition. That I have a lot of structures within you. There's there's some things that are standing up right in my life. Um, There's opportunities opening up for me. But frankly, if God's not in it, I don't want it. Or if you're hearing you say, Lord, I I just need a fresh wind. I just need a fresh wind of your anointing, of your love, of your faith. If you fit in any one of those three categories, meet me here at the altar. I don't want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. I'm the first to come. I'm the first to say, Lord, help me be better for you. Help me do better for you. I want to stand not in my own power, not in my own strength. That when I stand, I don't want to stand by myself. I want to stand in the power of your Holy Ghost. And when we feed people, we don't want to do it so that people can say, look at Highland. But we want to do it so that people can see our good works. But give God the glory. Hallelujah. Y'all come closer. Y'all can scoot up a little bit. I 
This may be somebody here that says, you know, <clears throat> Pastor Joe, at one point I was kind of like that army. I, me and God were good. It was one time like prayer didn't feel like a chore. Church, reading my scripture didn't feel like a chore. And I, me and God were good, man. We were on good terms. It seemed like everywhere I went, everything I did, I had a God consciousness about it. But then at some point, the writer of Hebrews says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he doesn't change and our relationship got jacked up, that means I changed. God didn't switch up on me. I switched up on him. God hadn't been unfaithful to me. I was unfaithful to him. God is so faithful every day, Highland, that his child support hit every morning. But Jeremiah said in Lamentations that his mercies are new <laughs> every morning. And I'm here today because I, I need that second win. I need to be able to stand again. But I understand that I don't want to do it in my own strength because that's what got me in trouble last time. I started to feel like I knew better than God. I started to feel like I could change him, change her. I started to feel like since this job doesn't give me peace, but it give me more money. God, I'm going to do this one. I know you're telling me to go right, but I'm going to go left. I know you're telling me to sit down, but I'm getting ready to stand up. I know you're telling me to close my mouth, but I got something to say. was not God family it's, and it's not you it's us because this sermon isn't about one person it's about the revitalization of an army that means the commander everybody from the commander to the cadet was a heap of bones which is to say what everybody from the pulpit to the parking lot from the preacher to the plumber can do better we in the same army. So I don't want to hold us any longer than I already have. Right where you are, I want you to begin to pray. We're going to pray collectively, but before we do, I want you to pray individually, right where you are. Because no one knows like you know the valley that you're in. <clears throat> no one knows like you know the low, dry place that you find yourself in. That's it, family. Talk to him. Talk to him. Hey, you ain't got to talk like your pastor or the elders or the deacons. Be straight up with him. God, I love you, but I'm in a valley. He's your father. Be, be straight up with him. God, I really want to do better. But I'm in a low place right now. God, my heart is to please you, but I struggle with being a people pleaser. And I spend so much of my life trying to please people that when it's my time to please you and to engage in self-care, I have no more of me left. Forgive me. Forgiving everybody else was right and forgiving you what was left. Talk to him. Let him hear your voice. Let him hear the sentiments of your heart. <clears throat> and so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name that heals. In the name that sets free. In the name that delivers. Father, there is no power in my name. My name has never healed anybody. So, 
we don't pray in Manoway's name, but we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, here we are. A sect of your army. Say, Lord, we find ourselves this morning in our own personal valleys. We find ourselves this morning in our own personal dry places. And Father, if we could fix our lives, if we could bring salvation and relief to us, we would have did it a long time ago. If our money could have did it, we would have bought it a long time ago. But this morning, Father, we find ourselves in situations that only you can save us from. Only your peace can keep us. Only your grace and your mercy can shield us. And so, Father, I pray for every member of this army called Highland under the sound of my voice. We understand that you're no respecter of persons. So just like you did it in Ezekiel 37, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you allow things to come together for us, to cover us. But God, just don't allow things to come together so that we may stand. But when we stand, Father, give us your spirit. We've tried it on our own time and time again. And we keep coming up short. And so, Father, we need you in every way. Thank God for 120 years. But if we're going to make it 120 more, we're going to need your spirit. Matter of fact, Lord, if we're going to make it another 120 days, another 120 hours, we need your spirit. So, Father, while we stand at the altar and stand and sit at our seats, we speak to the four winds and we say, blow, winds blow. On our money, blow. On our minds, blow. On our hearts, blow. On our imaginations, blow. God, we need you in every nook and cranny of our life. Father, thank you for Dr. Nalen. Thank you for his wife. Thank you for the leaders of this house that lead us vigorously every single week. And I pray that you renew the strength in this man of God. That you touch his heart and touch his mind. That Father, as he leads us, I, I pray that he continues to be led by you. God, give him strength. Give him your grace. Give him your mercy. Give him your peace. Let him have sweet sleep tonight. Father, touch his wife that stands next to him and undergirds him. Father, touch their family, their kindred. Father, I pray for every preacher, every elder, every deacon of this house, for the ushers, for every member from the youngest to the eldest. We need you. Thank you for a second win. Thank you for another second chance to stand. We pray and ask all these name, all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, everyone, say praise the Lord. If you would just hold it for one second. Listen, every time Pastor Manaway comes here, I listen to his messages and I am blessed because of this young man. Let's put our hands together again. Thank you, Joseph. He is completing his second master's. 
Uh, he's almost finished that in theology. This is a man who studies the Word of God. And I know you are going to continue, as I prayed over you last time, continue to do the great things that God has for you around the world as you traverse in the Caribbean and everywhere you go. So we just have this small token. We just want to leave that to you for your reading pleasure. Let's stretch our hands this way. Everyone say, God bless. Amen. Pastor Manaway. Use him, Lord, to do great works to your glory. Keep him. Bless him. Be a hedge around him. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. God bless you, man. Yes, absolutely. Come on, everyone stand as we get ready to go to the fellowship. We're going to go to next door. We have food for you. We have baptism. Bring them up here, Minister Sandra. Just put them all across right here, and you guys begin to hand out those certificates. Let's give a hand again for all of our baptismal candidates. Come on up, baptismal candidates. God bless you. Again, um, Elder Feathers, where are you at? Elder Feathers, Elder Feathers, where are you at? I need Elder Feathers. He's coming this way, and he wants to tell you something about this Wednesday night that's very important. So everyone hold your movement for right now. Listen, we have the Aspiring Ministers class this Wednesday, C.L.C. Butler. We started off this week with four people in the class. If you, I saw a couple of you who said we didn't know it started, and uh, we're going to do that. We have Sunday Night Ignite. We have Wednesday night live at 5.30 for the fellowship meal, prayer at 6. Now listen, I'm going to turn it over to Elder Feathers here, and then we're going to do our benediction. We have Youth Sunday next week. Everyone say Youth Sunday. Next week, Minister Johnny Edwards will be bringing a word and come out and support our youth. And then we have Women's Day. Everyone say Women's Day on the 28th. And we have a guest speaker in Romanita, Minister Romanita Hairston. She is the CEO of a billion dollar company, Murdoch Trust. And she's coming to share the word of God with us. So we have Youth Sunday and Women's Sunday coming up. Now I want Elder Feathers. He is going to give us a word. And then I want to recognize all of our baptismal candidates. We have done that right now. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Just one second. Those of you who've been coming to Life Application on Wednesday night, amen, Life Application Bible Study on Wednesday night. This Wednesday night is our last uh, class, but it's going to be a summary review. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take excerpts for all the classes that we had, and we're going to put it in one, compile it into one review. The review is going to have multiple choice, and we're going to fill it out together. And here's what that means. Those of you who missed a few classes, you can come to that on Wednesday night, and you can get all the answers and all the information you need from the classes you missed. Amen? God bless you. Thank you. And I want to say a special prayer again for the Collins family, um, Brenda, who lost her mother. And I want to pray for Sister Annette Ramsey. I saw her leaving just this moment. And I want to pray for Senator Avell Garley. Is the senator still here in the house? Amen. God bless you. And Mother Ivy Miller. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. All first-time visitors, I would like to meet you in the back. And then everyone else, go to the fellowship hall. Amen. As Sunday night, ignite tonight. I've already said that, Elder Pulling. Thank you again. All right. Let's go to the Lord. Lord, we thank you right now for your blessings. Your Lord, you, Lord you've showed up today. Uh, you said to understand our circumstance. And then we must understand our calling and then understand our condition. 
And so now, Lord, as we leave this place but not your presence, we ask your blessing upon this church. 120 years. Father, may we continue to be a light on the hill, the salt of the earth. And we thank you for your blessings, Father, over this church, every leader, every committee, every board leader, every elder, every council. Father, the deacons and the deaconess, the band, the ministry. Lord, the sound and the tech, AV, bless us all. We pray as we serve you, God, and give you the glory. Now as we leave this place, but not your presence, Lord, let your hand of mercy touch Senator Adel. Let it touch Mother Ivy Miller. Let it touch Sister Annette Ramsey. Let it touch Marilyn Monroe's family. Let it touch God, all the sick and shut in. We pray in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, for your healing touch. And we thank you for your blessings on us, church, right now. And remember Sister Brenda Collins, God. Pastor Collins, bless her, God. Comfort her soul, even as she mourns the loss of her mother. God, you know all things, and we give it to you. In the name of Jesus, now may you cause your face to shine upon us. May you keep us from falling. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in our lives from this day and forevermore. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go serve the Lord. I'll see you next door. God bless you. We're in the right place. Building community and changing lives.